everything's always being recorded. Don't you know the NSA? <laughs> <laughs> They're like Santa Claus, except creepier. Yeah. Hi, John. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Season 3, Episodes 1 and 2. Or as they call it, Volume 3. <laughs> oh, we've been waiting so patiently for this series to start up at... To... <laughs> Like, oh, we've been waiting so patiently for this series to start up again. I've been waiting so patiently for Lux to learn how to speak. <laughs> oh, I know how to speak. It's just sometimes my mouth goes, Nope, I'm not doing it. Mm -mm, you're not going to make me. But you're my mouth. I'm going to let you breathe and that's it. That's very nice of you. <laughs> but my nose can handle that. Hmm. <laughs> I was just about to make a joke about my... Parts of my body having personalities, but I just stop right there. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> uh, so you were a little disappointed at the beginning of the season. <laughs> well, compared to where we left off, you know, huge battle, reveals, mysteries, and then where are we? We're at a sanctioned tournament. It's like being in the middle of fighting Cell at a season finale and then turning around and being at the World Martial Arts Tournament when the series picks back up. <laughs> wait, wait, weren't we over there? <laughs> and I had no problem with that because I was laughing my ass off at the first episode. Well, I did get over it. Especially at Blake. That was great, just giving a look at the ramen salesman slash bookstore owner slash repair guy slash we've seen him in every season so far. <laughs> I have a thought feeling he's going to be important in the future. <laughs> he's already important because apparently he runs every shop ever except for the bookstore. <laughs> well, that was a different bookstore. Because apparently he runs his own bookstore, or at least he's a sign repairman. I don't know. But that scene was golden. Especially when she can't pay for it. Um, maybe I can sneak the snow! <laughs> <laughs> Considering hers was probably the most expensive item. <laughs> Everyone else just had ginormous bowls of ramen. They were quite large, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Oh, and Nora talking herself into a depression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so do you have any nitpicks on the first episode other than, why did we go from here to here? <laughs> nice team battle. Um, like Sender's new outfit. I could see cosplaying that if I ever get around to new cosplay costumes. <laughs> and nice touch that Ruby isn't supposed to be representing her team in the doubles, even though we all know something's going to happen to either Weiss or Yang and she's going to step in. But at least she wasn't intended for it. Yep. I also like that they're doing the classic hinting that we have a chosen one in this story and everyone's probably jumping right to the conclusion of it's Ruby. But I'm thinking it's either Team Ruby, all of them, or it's Jean. Jean has the potential from, you know, the being the most unlikely hero. Because not only is he socially awkward, he's a mediocre fighter, we haven't really seen his semblance. He's utterly clueless about what it means to be a huntsman. Mm -hmm. Though we've already gotten hints that he has something special going on with his semblance and his um, overall power and he does seem to come from a lineage of fighters yes but i think he is also the only fighter whose weapon is not also a gun <laughs> apparently he has a shield that can fold up and a sword apparently that's very classic why did i suddenly got this idea in my head that at some point all the other weapons are going to become useless and his is the only weapon that actually still works because it's not complicated yeah, and it doesn't look like it runs on dust like everything else. Mm-hmm. And I like how so far these last two seasons, this season and season two, both started with an episode that was really funny and action-packed. Yes, because the Team Ruby was a nice fight sequence. Especially with that poor lady on the other team who's apparently dealt with this before of, Oh, my teammates suck. I gotta pull their asses out of the fire. <laughs> Well, it's like, okay, everybody's back, and okay, we're losing again. <laughs> uh, and I like how surprised Ruby was, like, we, we won, we won, of course we won! <laughs> oh, you know, it was kind of sudden. Uh, 
and the two announcers are kind of appropriate and interesting at the same time. The real fast talker and the person who likes to talk a lot, so... Yes, and both beacon instructors, and since that kingdom is the one hosting, uh, so that means beacon is local slash home team advantage, kind of makes sense. And a nice way to clue everyone in on what's going on to go, if you're just joining us, because sportscasters do that all the time. And just in case you didn't watch the whole World of Remnant thing on the tournament itself. Well, even if you had watched that, you still have where I had the disconnect of, wait a minute, we were here. Now we're here? <laughs> I think we should move on to the next episode. How about you? <laughs> Unless you had more nitpicks, of course. Mm. My only other thing was, Weiss, this is what happens when you don't answer your father's phone calls. Your credit cards get cancelled. Mm-hmm. I'm punishing my child for not calling me. <laughs> but apparently she has good reasons, too. We just don't know what those reasons are yet. Not entirely. We do have some hints, based on what we've learned about the Schnee Dust Company so far. Mm -hmm. And now we join Team Juniper, fighting rather well, and then we realize, yeah, well, they're a pretty good team, and then Jean is Jean. <laughs> also, good tactic of sniper, hide, retreat! <laughs> Apparently, hers is an axe and a sniper rifle. <laughs> also, I didn't somehow, I don't know why I never really thought of this connection, because it's kind of obvious now, but Norris, or Nora, and Norris, or Nordic... God of Thunder, Thor, Lightning, Hammer, Big Hammer. Yeah, I can see how that works now. <laughs> oh, see, if you'd said Norse instead of Nordic when you were telling me, I might have agreed with you more. Well, I couldn't really remember the word correctly. Don't blame me. I also just thought of it earlier, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> oh, what makes sense is how great Juniper works together as a team because they needed very minimal instruction to pull that off you know we had retreat nora climb the mountain ren distract the sniper oh i figured out that the sniper is going for nora we're going to block that pyro we're blocking that pretty much like up yep got it jump pink <laughs> i love even if they get into the middle of an argument in the middle of a fight they're like no it's this power Flower power! I don't know how to do... What, what's flower? Flowers! Is... <laughs> Dudes, we're in the middle of a fight, but we're in the middle of a conversation! <laughs> uh, Jean, I think he means we're all in the middle of a fight right now. Oh! Okay, Nora hit him with a hammer. Yes! <laughs> and the guys are like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Guess we should have let them keep arguing. <laughs> I love how he, Jean doesn't even think for a moment, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, well, we have to end this now. <laughs> that proves that they were actually a very strong team, that they can be distracted like that and still win the fight. And then there's Neptune. Neptune, really? You're afraid of the water. Is it because you use electricity? Is that is that the reason? That's the kind of feel I got after the end of that fight. No, but it's like, wait, first, you can't dance. And second, your name is Neptune, your weapon is a trident, and you're scared of the water. <laughs> wow, Team Sun is in trouble. Yep, and uh, Neptune's in trouble after the match. <laughs> Weiss is going to give him such a pinch. With her fist. <laughs> or, like, mark her initials in his outfit. <laughs> like Zorro. She's got that nice pointy sword. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or she'll put him in a giant ice stand and go, you don't like water, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and that reminds me of last season. Why does everyone keep calling me the ice queen? <laughs> or the snow queen? <laughs> like, there's a reason why. I mean, really. And those girls they went up against were good. Oh, I like the part where the one got stuck upside down. And then <laughs> all the knives came out of her skirt. And I love how she was holding her skirt and she goes, oh, no, my shuriken. He's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> also, someone's a little flamboyant. And I love how the um, stages, each side of the stage is randomly chosen at the beginning of the match. Well, it was very Pokemon, actually. <laughs> and I just remembered the evil villains seem to have a plan going on in the background there. Of course they do. The evil villains have been ahead of us the entire time. And speaking of stuff happening in the background, I think that guy we saw in the bar is actually... The uncle, who I believe trained Ruby. But if that's the case, 
then why wasn't he excited for any of the fights, including the one his niece was in? I'm thinking because he's a very... He's a veteran, basically. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's also in the photo that's in the intro, I think it is? Because I know there's a photo in the episode somewhere where it shows, like, an, an old Team 4 and he's one of them. And it also shows the lady who was talking to Yang. Which is really awkward since the lady in that photo is Summer Rose, who is dead. Also, what is with the gears and that sword? I'm like, is that somehow Osbin? <laughs> yeah, Osbin has definitely been shown associated with time in a lot of ways. And I believe we have, we spoke about that theory in our last Ruby episode, way back when at the end of season two. Yes, we do. And there are always gears in the intro with Osbin. So the fact that there are gears in the sword Mm -hmm. And speaking of that intro, it looks like this is going to be one of those seasons where the heroes end in a hopeless kind of thing and it looks like it's really bad for our heroes. No kidding. I mean, the lyrics to the season two song were bad enough. You know, burning bridges, going out on our own, questioning our very identities and the purpose of our battle. And now we go to, oh damn, we lose. We, we lose? And we lose a lot. And no hero will stand above anyone else because everyone's lost. Mm -hmm. And the imagery in it is very dark and foreboding and it shows a lot of attacks on the main school complex. And why is the main school complex so important? Other than, you know, getting rid of the training ground is kind of important if you want to make sure there's no one else to come up after you've killed off all the warriors, but still. Yeah, but there's more than one training campus, so... Mm -hmm. Why is this one in particular? Are they headed after the campus or after Ozpin? I would say after Ozpin and secondarily after Glenda, since she's basically Ozpin's second in command. Mm -hmm. So any nitpicks on the second episode? Who has an argument about attack names in the middle of a fight? That apparently no one else knew about. Yes, even though John is pretty sure they went over these things. But why on earth would you pick flower power for the attack? With Rim being the flower and Nora being the power. Okay, I see Nora being the power. And I'm pretty sure Ren's weapon has flower in the name somewhere. But still. Mm-hmm. No, the name for John's and Kira's attack was pretty cool. Oh, yes. But we didn't get to see any of these attacks. And we probably never will. <laughs> because when they do actually use them, they won't use John's names for them. Which means we won't know for sure. Unless he does the whole thing of like, I, I think my name was better. <laughs> and says the name that he was going for. And they just go, Jean, that's a stupid name. We're sorry. <laughs> Though Jean is definitely coming around as a good leader for his team. Yeah, he is doing surprisingly well. So I do wonder who they're going to send to the doubles. I mean, I kind of go, well, obviously Pura because, you know, she's Pura. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of been pointed out that the bad guys are after her specifically because they wanted to find out her weakness. So mm -hmm. makes sense. Take out the strongest um, warriors first, so the rest are you know vulnerable. Well, they're demoralized because if you take out the best fighters first, the ones that everyone agrees are the best fighters, it's like they just took out Celestia. How are we supposed to win? Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, we have Lou. Oh no, Luna. <laughs> Bring my little ponies into the conversation, check. So, uh, want to show your final thoughts on these two episodes? Really enjoyed them. Glad they're back. <laughs> Glad I finally figured out why John's team is called Juniper. <laughs> I, I kind of figured it was based on the letters. <laughs> kind of like Ruby. Like, you don't spell Ruby that way. Yeah, but Ruby's more obvious because it's only one letter off. Juniper's letters are all consonants. Speaking of the names reminded me of the scene at the very beginning of the first episode of, yeah, I know it gets kind of confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was a nice way to sum things up, Ruby having the conversation at Summer Rose's grave. I might even hint at my theory that it's the team Ruby, not Ruby herself, that's special. If you really think about it, Ruby's team is pretty special because they have a, an amazing rookie, they have an heiress, they have a faunus, and then they have whatever Yang is, a human tank. So my final thoughts on these episodes were, oh, I am so glad they're back because I have enjoyed both of them. And I'm going to watch both of them again tonight. Because <laughs> I had to watch the second one on a tablet. And I got to say that Rooster website sucks on a mobile device. We need to work on that. I guess that's why they have an app. <laughs> 
and I want to know if that white-haired woman that we see coming towards Weiss in the intro oh, yeah. is an older sister or mother. I'm thinking it's an older sister because the, she looks up to her more of, at least the reactions I've seen, is more of a older sister thing, like someone she aspires to be, and maybe the reason she left to become a huntress. Quite likely, and, you know, Weiss was so excited with the, she's here, and I'm betting that's who's here. This has been our thoughts on Ruby, Season 3, Episodes 1 and 2. Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description.